Anybody that knows anything about me knows that I love Ronnie Benucci. They don't sound good, however, on the gong. But that doesn't stop me. I love his playing with the killers. I, I love them as a band. I, like I geek out like a little girl when I go see them live. Like it's bad. So I love this song, Mr. Brightside. And if you're in a cover band, duh. This is the one killer's tune that, this is the one I would start with if you're in a cover band. There are others, but this is gonna be the one that most people recognize from the intro. So I'm gonna break apart the major parts. I'm gonna show you some Venucciisms that Ronnie does in there that you'll find across his playing, uh, across several albums, things that he does repetitively that kind of mark his style. We're gonna go through the whole thing. Let's do this. All right, so let's break apart this song, Mr. Brightside. I love Ronnie Venucci's playing in this song. This song moves, and that's one of the things that makes it so hard to play because of some of the hi-hat lifts he does and because it's moving so fast. It's, almost, it's, it's very much similar to Everlong by the Foo Fighters. It's not that that part is so hard. It's just moving. It's just a two-handed 16th note groove that's moving at such a high tempo. To get that to lock in tight really takes some work. So really work on this one and, and make sure your groove is there because this is at about 148 BPM. So we're out for the first four measures at the top. That's a guitar intro. When we do come in, we have a four on the floor, what we would call just a disco groove. It's going to be 16th notes on the hi-hat. Four on the floor means one, two, three, four. We have two and four on the snare drum, and we're alternating hands here on the hi-hat. So it's going to go... That's going to be the essence of the first groove, and I'll play that slowly here in just a second with a click. Uh, but there's some modifications that he does with this first groove. There's some accents he does on the hi-hat. If he doesn't raise the hi-hat, he'll accent it. So uh, one of the things that I love about playing this song is the articulation that he does on his hi-hat. And that's really fun to try to recreate some of that stuff. So check out the sheet music. It's in the video description. There's a full breakdown of all of these grooves so that you can see the entire song. Get that for free. Just download it. It's my gift to you. Um, you can download that and use that as a reference for to, to kind of transcribe some Venucci-isms. I'll go over some. Uh, you'll oftentimes see him lifting the hi-hat on the uh, the E of, uh, excuse me, not the E, the uh of a beat. So in this case, oftentimes on the uh of three, and then we'll lift it again on the and of four. So three E and. So that's going to be something you see him doing that doing very often in the verses of this. He changes it up. It's not consistent the entire time. Sometimes he just accents. Sometimes he raises it. Sometimes he raises it for longer. So it, there is a variation there. I'll play it with a click uh, around 80 or 90 BPM, and then I'll play it at full tempo at 148 BPM so you can see what those sound like. All right, now I want to show you what I would call a Venucciism. Every drummer has things that they do that become kind of signature to their style, and this is something I've noticed that he does. So when I'm playing Killers, I will throw this in where it's appropriate. It's a very simple thing. He, he'll he come into four by hitting a snare on the and of three. So it's one, two, three, pa, pa, 
and he'll do a crash a lot of times on that four and lead into the next measure. That doesn't seem like a big deal until you have a drummer that does this and it becomes one of their signature things. So look in the second line, the last measure of the second line in the first verse and you'll see that he does that. And look in the second line of the pre-chorus and you'll also see that he does that. He does something like this. which that just helps kind of prep for the next measure. Okay, so I just kind of want to point out a couple of things like that where you can see that he, um, he'll drive to that four, he'll crash on that four many times, and he hits that and of three coming into that backbeat on the four. Now the next measure we have is, or the next groove we have is gonna be in the pre-chorus and it's very straight ahead. The kick drum stays the same, the, the snare drum stays the same. The only thing that changes is the hi-hat and we go to open sloshing eighth notes on that hi-hat. So it's gonna go Now, let me demonstrate that uh, at around 90 BPM with a click, and then I'll demonstrate it a little bit fast, or not a little bit, a lot bit faster at the full tempo, 148 BPM for the song. Now, right before the chorus, he goes for about four measures, he goes into this tom groove, and that tom groove is gonna be eighth notes here on the floor tom, it's gonna be two and on the snare drum, and it's gonna be four on the snare drum. Three, four. Now, the kick drum pattern essentially is gonna be one, three and, and the and of four. Now let me demonstrate that with a click, eight, uh, around 90 BPM, and then I'll speed it up to the, to the tempo of the song so you can hear what that sounds like. All right, so we have a drum fill right before that chorus, and it's pretty simple, eighth note bass fill. It's gonna be one here on the kick drum, the and of one on the snare drum, and open sloshy hi-hat. Two and on the kick drum, three and, four and, right? It's kinda simple, so three and, four and, Now a lot of these fills make a lot more sense once you notch that up to 148 BPM. Then the fills really start to fill out. No, no pun intended. Or maybe the pun was intended. A fill starts to fill. You get what I'm doing, anybody? All right. And the chorus is going to go back to the same uh, pre-chorus groove. It's going to be sloshy hi-hats, the same type of a groove uh, that he was doing before. You'll see the second line of the chorus. You'll see he does that Venuciism where he hits the and of three, goes into four on that crash cymbal, and that's something you'll see throughout this song. And now we're at the next verse. The next verse, or excuse me, we should say uh, the, uh, the interlude in between the first chorus and the second verse is going to be um, that same groove we're playing in the chorus. He's just going to a crashing on a ride cymbal. Then we go to the verse, have that same groove from verse one and verse two, but we have a break there. Okay, it's one, two, three, four, and then you'll see he does almost the exact same fill that I just taught you uh, going into that chorus. And so we've already learned this. We're over halfway through learning the song. 
Then he goes to the, to the pre-chorus, plays the same grooves again. Uh, and the next thing we need to look at, and I'm going to scroll down on my sheet music so I can look at this. I'm just going to do this live style. Uh, the next thing I want to look at actually before the pre-chorus is the drum fill that he does before the pre-chorus. And that's going to start here on the um, snare drum. It's going to go one E and a two E and. Now the kick drum is going to be four on the floor throughout this. And so after that, uh, the and of two on the snare drum, we have the uh of two. And then we have three E and a. Uh. So one E and a, uh, two E and a, uh, three E and a. Uh. And then four goes four E and a. Uh, very typical kind of around the toms in a rock setting. Let me play that whole thing for you. Kick drum is going to be four on the floor, all right? All right, so let's speed that up. That's the trouble with some of these fills. They're just at fast tempos. Now, let's go ahead, and after that next chorus, we're coming in. We're going to have a breakdown. We have an interlude breakdown where we're just four on the floor, eighth notes on the hi-hat, open sloshy. Uh, a lot of times he's playing four and uh, on, that, on that kick drum. And so going into the build, into the next, or into the, uh, shall I say, bridge uh, or the outro, um, the outro area, uh, we, three, three measures before that last bridge or that last outro, we're going to build on the snare drum. Now they overdubbed an open hi-hat part. Don't worry about that. We have 16th notes on the snare drum with four on the floor in, that measure, in the, the three measures before that last section. So it's going to go one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Then we're going to change the kick drum to eighth notes to build the intensity. So one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Let me play those two measures. Then we're going to continue eighth notes here on the kick drum. And this is the pattern we're going to play. We're going to play a hemiola type of a pattern, which is a three over two type of a pattern. So it's going to go one E and a two E and a three E and a. And then we have four E and and then a, a on the snare drum. I don't know where I was going with that. So very slowly. Let's get that up to full tempo. I'll play the build first on the snare drum and then go into the others. And that's going to be the last major thing that we need to learn. Now, for the ending, we're going to end on one, two, three, okay? And so that ending, let me just scroll down to there. That ending, obviously, we're going to be on a crash cymbal here. And on that next to the last measure, he plays one uh, on the kick drum, one and two, one on the snare drum, the and of two on the snare drum, kick drum on three, then he plays and three, or excuse me, and four, and ba ba ba. That's the part that he plays. All right, so it's going to sound like this. Now, if I'm playing it live, I like to do something else a little bit different. I like to fill in that area. And so instead of doing what he does, which I'll play what he does. I 
I prefer to do something like this. Okay, so look again. That's just something I do live or some iteration of that. I'll do a fill in those last two measures, but it ends on one, two, three. All right, so that's really uh, the song uh, as a whole. So we have the verse part, we have the iterations of, um, of the different uh, grooves in the pre-chorus and the chorus, and then we have the build-up, a couple of fills, but other than that, that's the song. If I was going to add a killer song to the set list for a cover band, this would be the first one I would add. People recognize it as soon as you start playing the intro. The others I've played in live settings, and they don't go over near as well as this one does. So hopefully this has helped you. If it has, leave me a comment below. Let me know what your favorite killer song is as well. Give it a thumbs up. Share it with another drummer that you thank. Uh, thank, that you thank. That's the Southern coming out me. Uh, it's the Southern coming out in me. It's this. It's the deep south coming out. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this professional lesson with Steven Taylor at Steven's Drum Shed. Um, no, <laughs> whatever you do, I will see. I've totally screwed this ending up. I'm going to see you in the next video. That's what's going to happen.